Bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Bienvenue à ce point de presse du Premier Good. ministre François Legault. Bonsoir et bienvenue à cette conférence de presse. Nous sommes avec Québec's uh, Premier François Legault. Nous sommes avec Christian Dubé, Québec Health Minister, et avec Dr Horacio Arruda, Québec's Public Health Director. Mr. Premier, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Well, listen, we have, uh, during the last days, looked at the situation prevailing in all regions of Quebec. And we have, amongst things, spent a few hours during the weekend with Dr. Arruda and also with three or other doctors, with the ministers and so on, with a lot of experts. So the idea is to try to derive a conclusion. It may be too early to have a full conclusion about the spring break, but it seems that, yes, there was an increase in the number of cases. There's a rising number, but not, nothing dramatic. This is cancelled uh, slightly by vac vaccination, which is still going on. I want to take advantage of this opportunity to thank Quebecers. We were really concerned about the impacts of the spring break. We feared the impacts, but there's a rising number of cases, but which is limited. But we're still concerned about the variant, mainly uh, the UK variant. There's an increase uh, in certain regions, many regions, and the public health doctors came up with some great forecasts, and we anticipate that by the end of next month, the majority of cases in Quebec will be British variants, meaning cases which are more contagious. And we've seen what this resulted in uh, elsewhere. If you follow what's happening in Italy, there is a new lockdown, new cases, and so on. A lot of cases also in France, rising numbers uh, in New York, close to home. A lot of cases there. And so the arrival of these variants, more specifically the arrival of the UK variant, means that we may fear a third wave. Hence, we have to be extremely prudent. However, last Saturday, we've changed uh, hours, we've, which means uh, it's brighter uh, later. So because of the advanced hour, we want to go and have a stroll outside in the evening. And a lot of Quebecers told me, can't we not just bring the curfew um, push it later. And I announce you that in the red zones, the curfew will be now 9.30 p.m., same hour as is the case in the orange zones, which means we are pushing the curfew hour 9.30 p.m. for all of the Quebec territory. That's for the new hour for the curfew. Now, great news for the young people in the orange zones. Starting March 22nd, public health accepts, will accept that secondary three, four, five students stop doing alternates. And so, which means that they can go back to school and attend school every day. We hope to be able to announce that also for the red zones, but as of March 22nd for orange zones, we will have that. For red zones, for artists, great news here for artists starting March 26th, which is a Friday, the theaters and uh, show venues will be open, uh, reopening in the red zones. So I've seen how this is extraordinary in orange zones. I mean, some artists will know who they are. They sent me some pictures of some shows that uh, were held in, in the regions and the population was there to support the performers. They are looking forward to seeing again their artists. This is great news, so be prepared for March the 26th. On March the 26th, again, the worship centers or venues in the red zones, 25 is the maximum number of people allowed. It's not a lot, but the public health authorities tell us that um, uh, for worship centers like churches, synagogues, and so on, people know each other better. There is a greater risk of contact. And so that's why we have 25, which is the limit of people that can gather, while in theaters, it's 250 in cinemas, for example. Another great news, but for a few regions, three regions only, north of Quebec, the Côte Nord, the Caspésie, and the Ile de Madeleine Islands, these three regions will become yellow, which means, concretely speaking, that there won't be 
an enforced curfew. Two families will be able to meet together and gather in homes and um, we'll have more sport. Also, Isabel Charest will tell you more about it. We'll have a release on that. For instance, we'll be able to be 12 gathering. It's like two hockey teams meeting uh, for doing contact sports, sports activities, but only for these three regions. This gives you an idea of where we're going. What we hope, obviously, is that uh, red zones become orange and orange zones eventually become yellow zones. And I believe that still this is quite encouraging to see all of this. Now, things stop there. I mean, regarding the changes we propose, but as you can see, we want to proceed gradually, really. I understand that Quebecers after a year, they're fed up. I'm the first one to be fed up, but we have to remain prudent. The last thing we want is to go backwards. In Italy, that's what's happening. They're going backwards and they're starting again to um, bring citizens into lockdown. However, uh, now great news, vaccination is going well. The rollout is good. Uh, great organization, by the way, hats off. Uh, until mid-April, let's say the next month, by the ne next month, I think we should have vaccinated pretty much everyone who's 65 years old and over in Quebec, all of those who want to be vaccinated from that age group with a first dose. This is great news because this changes the whole picture. I've repeated this quite often. It's people 65 years old and over. They are the most vulnerable people. So mid-April, that's when everybody that wanted to be vaccinated will be vaccinated. And now, great news, I'm, I may be anticipating things, but supported uh, by the health minister by June 24th, which is the national holiday, we foresee that all Quebecers that want to get uh, a shot will have received by then a first dose. That's the date that we have for us. That's our goal. At least a first dose for all of those that want it in Quebec by the Fête Nationale. But it doesn't mean that everything will be allowed starting on that date, but at least we'll have a better national holiday than last year, and um, at least we'll have a more positive summer. However, it's important to state this, and I am repeating this. Our main concern, our fear, it's in the households. If we displace, if we push uh, the curfew uh, at a later stage, it means the temptation is greater. People may want to visit friends in, an, in a different home and don't do that. Do not do it. We still have a few weeks to go. It's important not to do that. Do not do these uh, gatherings. Don't go from one house to another. It's forbidden. You can still get a ticket. Now, something else that's important, and we must say it, and I've asked the question many times, and Christian also has asked the question many times during the last hours. The three vaccines that are offered, Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, are three efficacious vaccines. They're safe. These are safe vaccines. Again, some people may suggest that I should be vaccinated first. Well, I must tell you that the time, when the time comes, when my turn is uh, coming, I'll, I'll get those shots. Any one of those vaccines, any one of those shots, I'll get them. I'm torn apart somehow because I want to give the example, become a role model, but a lot of people want to be vaccinated, so I want to respect things and wait for my turn. Like everyone else, I'm 73 years old, so once we focus on that group, then I'll get vaccinated, I'll get my shot. We agree, the three of us agree here, no problems being vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, to conclude, I'd like to say the following. You see this. These are not maybes. The vaccination, and I was talking about this yesterday in the afternoon, I was talking about this with Mr. Trudeau, vaccines have been confirmed for the upcoming weeks. We still have a relatively short delay for the rollout. We have a deadline. We set a deadline, which is tight. And uh, obviously, the next step will be also about working on the economy. 
already a lot of Quebecers have been able to um, put bread on their, on their table the way they did before. The, um, again, in Ontario, they're at 9.2% in terms uh, of, uh, you know, the labor. And so we should not uh, break our progress because of the upcoming weeks where we have to be more prudent. And again, I'd like to ask Quebecers to work still because the unemployment rates are great. We went from 8.8 to 6.4. In Ontario, they're at 9.2 in terms of unemployment. We're getting closer to the finishing line. We're almost there. We should continue working hard. We should not make exceptions. Oh, it's just a small exception. No, that's not a good idea. We have to continue following all sanitary guidelines, and I count on you on all Quebecers. The situation remains stable in Quebec. March break seems to have gone well, thanks to all your efforts, but we're seeing an increase in cases of variants. We have to stay careful. I'm announcing that in red zones, the curfew will now be at 9.30 p.m. starting tomorrow. So we can take an evening walk, but indoor gatherings are still forbidden. I also have good news for young people. Secondary three, four, five students in orange zones will now go to school every day starting March the 22. In red zones will also reopen theaters from March 26, and we will um, increase the maximum capacity of places of worship, worship uh, to 25 people starting on March 26. We also have three regions that will switch to yellow zones in March 20, on March 26, Nord du Québec, Côte-Nord, and Gaspésie, et de la Madeleine. This means no more curfew and authorization to gather in houses for two families and more sports. It's only for those three regions at the moment, but it gives us hope. The vaccination is uh, going well. The, we plan to vaccinate everyone over 65 by mid-April, and we expect to vaccinate anyone who wants, who wants it by our Fête Nationale on June 24. It's encouraging, but the battle is not over. We have to stay very careful for a mu for few more weeks. I'm counting on you all. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Mr. Minister, yes, the health minister. Regarding vaccination now, I want to thank the teams that are on the field, the vaccination teams. I'd like to remind you that uh, we set a record. We broke a record last Saturday. More than 34,000 doses were administered. A little bit more than that on March the 12th. And so our teams are really um, doing things masterfully, um, you know, on the field. I'd like to thank all the people on the field right now. That's for the vaccination. I'd like to come back to the pharmacists because they've started uh, making appointments, and this is going very well. I've seen some uh, stories about that in the media. Things are going well. And um, by next week, I announce that as of uh, March uh, 25th, from the Greater Montreal region, La Rontide, uh, La Naudière, Laval, Montérégie, uh, they, they will start making appointments also. So for those regions, this is effective for uh, the week of April the 5th. So these this means that about 1,000 pharmacies will participate in the vaccination rollout. This is just for the Greater Montreal region. So that specific contribution will be furthered as of mid-April because at the end, I, I mentioned this, I had mentioned this, it's more than 1,500 pharmacies amongst them which will be working and deploying the vaccination plan over the whole Quebec territory. If the machine's working well right now, imagine what this means. We still have not included all the appointments from the pharmacists, so we are preparing 
preparing to grow in power, as we say. I'd like to thank all the pharmacists, all the field teams for that very reason. They are currently working extremely hard to make sure that the experience is as pleasant as po possible in pharmacies and in vaccination sites, as much as possible. In the next days, I'll tell you about the deadlines with companies also, uh, with corporations, because we're making a lot of progress on that front. Also, a few words to add on the what the Premier has said about AstraZeneca. A lot of things have been said during the last days. I'd like to take advantage of this opportunity to thank um, the people from the opposition parties. They've asked me to meet with them. We had a wonderful conversation about the information that we had. Dr. Arruda made himself available with Mr. Paré to be available also and then to uh, ask uh, the questions from the opposition. This is a good evidence that shows that all um, members of parliament are working together. I really liked it the way it was done this uh, uh, afternoon. I wanted to stress that. Now, regarding the press releases about what happened in Europe, a lot of information circulated. We understand European countries opted for a principle which is about prudence uh, during the past days. While this is important, we have to remember, remind Quebecers that whilst the main thing about AstraZeneca was uh, about saying that, well, there was a batch in Europe that was challenged, but that vaccine batch did not enter Canada. So it's very important to mention this. And with the time zone difference, I cannot tell you exactly when, but the European Medication Agency has announced today that it was formally convinced that, I'm using their word, that uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine has advantages, that it's safe. I'd like to thank the public health authorities from Quebec, uh, Health Canada, and the World Health Organization. They reminded us that the vaccine is of quality and uh, it it is safe, it is, it's efficacious. We have to remember Quebecers about it. We have to readjust things in our vac vac vaccination sites because it's normal in view of all the information that went around. Of course, Quebecers raised questions and we had to adjust the waiting times in vaccination sites while registration may have taken five minutes, seven minutes. Now it's normal. People were asking a lot of questions about vaccines and we told our assessors and our people, welcoming people to take as much time as possible in order to answer people's questions. I'd like to thank them. I'll give you some numbers here. We have statistics for the past days since we started focusing on AstraZeneca, since we have those vaccines in the greater vaccination sites, not just for home care services. It varies from 1% to 2%. People that turned it down when they refuse that vaccine, we accept that. We ask people to go back home, and then we uh, take another, make another appointment for later, at a later date. It's very important for us to say that this is just marginal, one or two percent right now. And so, as news will come up, I'd like to remind you that all vaccines approved by Health Canada, they're all great, they're all good, no matter which one. It is. Now, this is a question that is quite concerning to us, slightly. The good news is that when people are vaccinated, they're too happy, slightly. I say this tongue-in-cheek because this is great news to be vaccinated. But we see this in our PAs, in our... Um, again, I'd like to remind people that the immunization period takes some time. And a lot of people have been mentioning this in CHSLDs. Sometimes it takes four weeks. It depends how old you are. And so for people in the RPAs, amongst things, and for all the people over 65 years old, if you have been vaccinated, you still have a few weeks to go before getting the full protective impact of your dose, your shot. We have to remind them of that. We, of course, with reason, we are extremely happy, but it's extremely hard to, um, you know, restrict your own, limit your own 
uh, actions because when you're happy, you want to, you're so happy and you want to jump and, and meet with people, but you have to be prudent. We have to be able to control things. Let's not give up. We have a lot of pressure on our teams. And so we have to comply with the delays we have. Our Premier has mentioned that there's the Fête Nationale, and the Fête Nationale delay. So in view of that, we have to work extremely hard. So I'd like to thank all of our staff members, all the people working on the field. Thank you again. Question period. First question, Tommy Chinois, La Presse. Given the pace that you've been announcing regarding vaccination for the first dose, would it be appropriate, would it be fitting to review the prioritization mode to maybe give priority to some groups, for example, handicapped people? Can we review priorities in view of certain deficit, de deficiencies, handicaps? You're saying that the pace will be faster, so in view of that, should we not reconsider the prioritization. I'll say first the following. There are a few news uh, that came up, and we asked for some adjustments. We asked the public health authorities about, about it. They've confirmed that for a few people, this would be so. Uh, what we call the intermediate resources people and the family resources people, it's just a matter of hours before we can confirm the news. But we had to ensure that uh, before we can confirm anything, these great news that we've obtained from the public health authorities, that we had uh, the uh, shots in place to be able to do that. But yes, we will do some adjustments. Inaudible. We'll start with that. And first of all, we'll see how the vaccine file is confirmed or not in the upcoming hours. Question. What about sustaining the curfew, keeping the curfew? Should I understand that the curfew will disappear only when a region effectively becomes red, a red zone? I mean, in the greater Montreal region, it may take some time. We're talking about answer. We are reviewing things every week, I would say every day. We are reviewing. Um, discussing again about measures. And we're announcing today that even though some regions remain in the red zones or modifying the curfew from 8 to 9.30, that's a new curfew, but in the yellow zones, there's no more any curfew. We announced that. What will be the situation prevailing next two weeks? We'll see. We'll have discussions with the public health authorities. Question from Cogeco Nouvelle. Good day, Mr. Premier, Mr. Dubé, Dr. Arruda. This is about the curfew. Do you have data, evidence-based data, showing that this has had some impact on the public health side of things? For example, we understand that you've really based your decision on that. You had curfews, and then you said the numbers went down. You create a causation relationship between both things. But do you have any evidence-based numbers showing us that you are indeed flattening the curve. Answer. If we're talking about evidence-based statistics in order to be able to compare one population of, let's say, this culture, comparing it with another population uh, where we had one population uh, complying with their curfew and the other not, we don't have those data. But if we consider some studies, some investigations which enable us to anticipate things on behaviors, the behavioral approach from Mr. Brisson, we see that the um, curfew has decreased contacts, contact numbers in, in residences. It's not the curfew in and of itself that has an impact, but it's more complicated with the curfew to gather and to have dinner with people in the evening. And there lies our demonstration. And also, if I may say something, when we uh, conduct surveys, with the Quebec population, obviously, when we talked about the curfew at the beginning, we were surprised, even ourselves, that we would opt for such a measure. Let's not hide the fact. But the population has accepted the curfew pretty well, I must admit it. Through the inquiries, we see this. When we say we should withdraw it, some people say, no, keep it, keep the curfew. It's working well. So I think it's one such measure. Now, to answer the former question, maybe we're no longer in the same hue. We're, it's not the same red. It's not the same yellow. It's not the same orange as before. We have to understand that. If we base ourselves on what happened in spring, the epidemiology is no longer the same. Things have changed. And there's a variant, which means that 
every time we come up with some easing measure, we have to be more prudent to measure the impacts. Because if we lift things, and again, we have an outbreak, then that's bad. We do not want to see the old bad movie that we saw this spring, la late last spring. We don't want to go through what we went through last spring. This is for the long run. We are all impatient, we're all fatigued, we're all fed up. I'm the first one to be fatigued, but my duty is to be pruned. So we have to be pruned so that we can sustain the curve as it is. Sharks will eventually emerge from the water because they'll become predominant, but eventually we'll have more people vaccinated. The impacts will be mitigated. Question. Mr. Legault, you said that eventually the majority of cases will be variant cases, UK variant cases in Quebec. For the next month, by the next month, that's what you said. According to the forecasts you've received, what is the level of risk that we might enter into a third wave? Have you been able to target things? So do you know if we can enter a third wave, as is the case in Europe and Italy? They are going through, again, another wave. Things are rising up again. Can we face that risk, Dr. Arruda? What are the risks that you get? What, what's the likelihood of us falling into a third wave situation again? Answer. As a matter of fact, Saturday we had a discussion and presentation. We talked for two hours with specialists. They did some forecasts. So we've talked about this for two hours. There's no single answer to your question. We have to look at each one of the regions, one by one. All regions are not created equal. And number two, there, there are different scenarios. Do people adhere well or not to the guidelines, sanitary guidelines? This creates certain results. There is not just one forecast curve. There are different forecast curves. There is no one single answer. Great. So they will have a plethora of answers. The Premier has done a good analysis. The speed of um, contagion varies depending on our way we can control things. And it depends also on um, whether or not people can adhere to the guidelines. If things are moderate in terms of adhesion, uh, uh, this can bring you quickly to a third wave. What do you mean by people adhering to? Well, if people follow the uh, guidelines. Let's say we postpone the curfew. Or, I mean, we bring it at a later hour, but then people start having dinners, gather. If the, youth, uh, the young people hide in order to gather, we're not following guidelines. So the people is uh, the thing is to see how people adhere to guidelines. Social distancing. The two meters, uh, when people do sports, you know, things will be lifted slightly in yellow zones compared to red zones and so on. And it depends on whether or not people adhere to the guidelines. It's a matter of fact also, giving the state of our situation, you know, we have a summary that we publish every day regarding the number of variant cases. We went from 18 to 19 percent of cases for variant contagions. It's great news because specifically in Montreal, they were able to control variant cases proportion, uh, in proportion with positive cases uh, at a 20 percent level. If you compare things with uh, places like Italy, it's when things become exponential you know, in terms of the variant contagion, that's when it's hard to avoid a third wave. Now, Montreal, for example, if they can, in Montreal, control the number of variant uh, contagions, if they can keep that at 20%, about as what they've been able to do in the past weeks, it means you can mitigate the uh, situation. And so you can have less cases in Laval and Montreal. They've been working on that every day. We talk to them every day in order to ensure that they do that. These are the statistics we publish, indeed. As long as people adhere and follow the guidelines, they do the tracing uh, measures, they provide us with the information if they've been unfortunately contaminated. If we can keep those variant numbers at those percentages, at those 20% levels, uh, more or less, this is going to go well. But this gives you maybe more specificity in terms of an answer, I hope. Yeah. Forecasts are really complex. Yes, indeed. Well, this is due to the fact that uh, things are not simple. 
There are forecasts regarding the number of cases, regarding the number of hospitalizations. There are forecasts that are done in view of the number of deaths. The death toll, this depends on where we are at in terms of the vaccination rollout. It depends on the average age of people that have cases, you know, as we say. Okay, let's say somebody, somebody wants to have a chart which summarizes everything, which encompasses the whole realities. It, it doesn't exist because it takes so much time to just try to understand everything and connect the dots. Question from TVA. Good day. This is a question for me, for you, Mr. Legault. Mr. Arruda, you can say something. Okay, you're lifting the restrictions somehow. The epidemiological uh, report is good. Things are at around 20% for the variant. So why should we keep the curfew in view of what you said? Answer, variants. When we look at the current situation, there's the presence of variants. They are more contagious, especially, well, even for regions where, well, even for the orange regions, you've seen that in the last days. People were concerned in the saguenay lac saint jean region, in the Outaouais region, and even in some orange zones. You've seen this. It's important for us to keep the curfew at 9.30 p.m. Follow-up question. This is about vaccination. You've said this. You're not dealing with the priority uh, age groups for vaccination. Regarding AstraZeneca, there's been a harm. You know, people are concerned by that. It's not very popular. Things turn badly. Now, can't you set an example here? Because in spite of the public authority opinion, people are concerned by this. Should you not set an example here and act on that? Answer, one or two percent only of Quebecers have said no to those shots. AstraZeneca. So I want to see what's happening in Europe now because it seems to be that uh, there's some side, uh, there's some type of argument between France and Germany against the UK. Maybe we know that AstraZeneca comes from the UK. Now, Christian was saying that a few minutes ago. Some other news were issued, and as the World Health Organization continues supporting the vaccine, there were doubts about one specific batch, by the way, which we haven't received in Canada. So we'll see how things are clarified within the next hours. But as I said earlier, I'm ready tomorrow morning to receive my own shot with AstraZeneca, that vaccine, but I don't want to state uh, the name of anyone, an excellent singer, but I'm not going to do like that singer who got a shot. If I may say something, the Premier is way younger than myself, but I, I'm not in that 65-year-old category, but I'm 56 years old, so I can be vaccinated. So I'm telling you, I'll be vaccinated in Montreal within the next days, once we're finished here at the Assembly, National Assembly. I hope I'll be able to receive my shot. Question, will this be a public... Uh, yes, I'll be pleased to do that. I don't want to make a show at it. I don't want to make a spectacle out of myself. But I was telling Dr. Arruda, I just wanted to make sure that everybody would have access to the vaccine first, but I'm 56 years old, or I'm in that age group. I'm not 65 years old. I'm, I'm still not 65, but I can get the vaccine. But I've seen other people that took advantage of this situation, and it's okay. That's our rule. It's for those that are born in that year, which is a beautiful year, you know. So I've uh, make, made my appointment and I'll be vaccinated in Montreal pretty soon. Question. Oh, Dr. Arruda, do you want to say something? I'm 60 years old. I'll wait a little bit. My medical advisor, Dr. Richard Massé, you've seen him a lot here at the press conference. He was vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. I just want you to know about that. We will be vaccinated with whatever shot they gave us, whatever vaccine they give us. I will not recommend, ever recommend things that I will not recommend for my own family. I'm saying this here. I have no problems getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. I remain convinced that this whole story about uh, this bad press about AstraZeneca, the agencies are going to look at these statistics and will realize soon, I'm convinced of this, that this was... Um, not justified, that this was 
misinformation somehow. Je souhaite que je vais l'avoir. Je, je fais attention parce que... I hope I'll get it. I'm, I'm careful here because I don't want to say that I want one vaccine over another one. No, quite the contrary. But I, I realized that when I made my appointment, I booked my appointment, and where uh, on that in that vaccination site there is AstraZeneca, the vaccine, and if I get it, I get it. I'll be very happy about it. Mr. Legault, a question of clarification. Mr. Legault, during a press conference, you said when people who are 65 years and, uh, and over will be vaccinated, we'll have a lot of fun, we'll be able to gather, we'll be able to have visitors at home. You foresee this for what, mid-April, which means Mother Day uh, that it should be better than uh, Easter? Well, Christian was saying it takes two, three weeks before we get uh, full effect. So you should add two or three weeks. This is really right on it. I don't know when this holiday is celebrated, but I hope that uh, we'll be able to, you know, for Mother's Day, I, I hope we'll be able to reopen, indeed, for Mother's Day. Dr. Arruda? Does it seem possible? This will depend on the epidemiology data. You have wonderful dreams. Same for me here, but we'll be very wise and prudent. But uh, we won't have gatherings uh, comprised of four or five different homes, households around your mother. No. But I'm just looking at why, what may be under the water. There's something lurking maybe under the water. I'm looking at that. But we're extremely, extremely anxious and we're looking forward to be happening, but we're extremely prudent at the same time. We have a question from CTV. This is for the English-speaking media. You spoke a lot about the increase in variants. You spoke about a concern of a, of a third wave. Is it a good idea? Why is it a good idea to loosen restrictions in red zones? I'm thinking of curfew and these uh, uh, music venues opening. If the situation is so touch and go. Okay, first, uh, we're very careful, as you notice, uh, we didn't change any red zone to orange zone. Second, uh, the changes that we propose, except for the curfew, are not tomorrow. And um, I think that uh, the situation is stable, but uh, we have to be careful. Uh, of course, we have a few weeks in front of us, so if something wrong is happening because of the vaccination, there's a kind of uh, ceiling to uh, what we can see for the future. So taking all that into consideration and with many hours of discussion with public health, we came to the uh, proposals we have tonight, and we think that uh, we're quite uh, careful. Maybe, Dr. Arruda, you, could you give us some more detail about the data you use to come to these decisions um, for these particular measures? In, in fact, it's, it's related, I would say, to the number of cases, of number of the ones w which are in the hospital, how many hospitals, how many people are, are dying. The capacity of our teams to do a very tough, uh, I would say, tracing with, with cases and isolation of, of cases, because the issue is the high transmissibility of those strains and the percentage of variants, you know? In fact, uh, this is very important because we it, it's clear, we're gonna have more cases. The issue is to make sure that this happens later when we're gonna have more people vaccinated, who will not need to go to hospital for not going back to the movie, the bad movie we had this spring? Thank you. We're going to in French with Patrick Belrose. In French now, we resume with uh, Patrick Belrose, Journal du Québec newspaper. It's along the same lines here as a question. Do you mind giving me some data, whatever you have, about possible hospitalizations if there's a third wave, given the fact that people have been vaccinated? Do we understand? Answer. Will we get the numbers uh, tomorrow? For, well, we'll have an update. That's what the Premier has just said. I'd like to remind you one of the charts that you've seen coming from Dr. Brisson. Uh, we saw this last week. There are two types of um, 
C'est-à-dire qu'il y, y a un certain relâchement. Levels of acceptance, I mean, strongly or not, people are um, maybe not so, they're negligent. Considering the vaccination as we know it, we might be able to, the problem is we might go up to about 1,500 hospitalizations, the same levels as what we had in the past. That's a bad situation, you know it. Is that a third wave? This would be a situation that would be quite critical. That's why right now the focus is on ensuring that our variants don't bring us there at that level. So we, sh we don't want to face this heavy hospitalization level in spite of vaccination. But you're lifting some uh, lockdown measures, even though that you know that the variants might create a situation like the one we saw in the past. As Dr. Arruda said, it, in certain regions, while keeping the curfew and improving the hours, but anyway, in all those cases, all those situations, and you'll see this in view of the measures that will show with the different uh, scenarios, possible scenarios that you'll see every week, you'll see that we have a certain leeway with our control levels um, while limiting the easing solutions. This is on what? Thursday. Thursday we'll have an update on that. Yes. Just a question for Mr. Legault. We have a feeling that um, we are exiting the crisis, and this is for, uh, around the corner. We will leave the crisis this summer. We won't go back to a situation like the one Italy is facing. Answer, there's a risk. If we're serious, if we follow the guidelines in the next weeks, we can be optimistic in view of this summer after June the 24th. But there are a few critical weeks when we don't have a majority of the population, not even a majority of the people who are 65 years old and over who are vaccinated as we speak now. And there are a few weeks that are determined, you know, they, they, they are game changers. And so after that, we can be optimistic. Mylène Crête, Le Devoir newspaper. You're promising vaccination for all Quebecers wanting it, a first dose by June the 24th. So how come are you making such assertions right now? Answer, it depends on the number of people we have. If you look at the different categories of people, people who are 65 years old and over, Still, there are 350,000 people that remain to be vaccinated to reach our target percentage, 75 percent. And it's with that number that the Premier derived the conclusion and said that we should be able to uh, get there at the beginning, beginning of April. Go ahead. April the 15th. Thank you for that clarification. And so uh, regarding other populations, when you deal with the 60-year-old people, now we still have 4 million people that remain to be vaccinated. So, in view of the forecasts that Daniel Paré has, if we see the same trend occurring, if we have the delivery as promised by the federal, we put things together, we connect the dots, and then we say we'll be able to get our first shot for everyone for by June the 24th. Do we need to vaccinate all the children in order to have enough people being uh, vaccinated and then to get to some type of mass uh, or herd immunization. Some studies are conducted to adjust doses for the kids. Well, I would like to say that this remains to be assessed in terms of strategy because, of course, for children, most of them cannot contract severe complications. As such, this will depend on the very dynamics of this virus. Will this come back in the same way uh, in the future, next year and years after that? We don't know a lot of things, but if we see that uh, some data show that uh, vaccinating children will, would enable us to bring levels down in terms of uh, transmissions, uh, well, then this remains to be assessed. Question from Le Soleil. There's a region like the Bas Saint Laurent that looks a little bit like uh, the Gaspésie. They have more people, but it's about the same proportion in terms of epidemiology, which prevents them from entering into the yellow zone level. 
Answer, it depends on the experience specific to each region. There have been fluctuations. There have been a few cases recently. It's not just the um, color code data. We have some debates amongst ourselves, some arguments even. People only look at the numbers and they say, oh, we're yellow. Oh, by the way, I'd like to tell you that uh, these zones that became orange because of the variant, they had to be for many weeks in the yellow zone before becoming orange. So we are doing a different analysis regarding the rates right now because the variant, what it does is that even though you have a small rate, you can increase very fast. In the Saguenay, Lac Saint-Jean, they were in the green zone. And two, three days later, they obtained the numbers that are like the red numbers. I, I'm not saying that they are red right now, but that's what happens when you have a variant. We have increased our criteria. We raised them so that people can go from one color to another. We consider the population traveling and so on. We look at some variants and how individuals behave, the type of outbreaks that are underway, that are happening, the capacity to have control over them. And obviously, we have qualitative analysis that's conducted with the public health authority directors. So it's extraordinary to have numbers and statistics. And as I say, if we use them without considering other elements, then we may face a problematic situation. And we have those arguments even in-house, as we say, our premier challenges me, challenges us about those questions. Why is it that in this place it's different, in this territory, in that? We need stability over time also, in a way longer fashion than whatever we had in last, the last spring, because of the variance. The RT is at 1.4, so it's more infectious. And look at what's happening in Ontario. Question, Mr. Dubé. Then we have to go beyond uh, 300,000 per week, if I understand things well. Will this campaign be happening every year now? Will it need to be vaccinated every year then? Answer, we'll, we'll have to do it first this year, okay? Listen, reaching 300,000 when we have vaccines, it's, it's not complicated. I'll give you an idea about this. When last Saturday we did 34,000 of those, if you multiply things by seven, we have enough vaccines to do it, to uh, administer the vaccine uh, seven days a week. We have reached uh, 240,000 per week. This is before uh, getting pharmacies and corporations aboard. We have to be careful about numbers because I'm saying the machine is running well and so on. If I say this, I know what's going to happen. That's why I want to congratulate people from the team because things are working very well, pretty well at 35 per day. We can do this. And when we get more vaccines, we'll be able to uh, empower ourselves so we can do this. Our challenge is that, well, I hope that April the 1st or, I mean, We'll, at the end of March, we'll uh, see uh, a huge delivery of vaccines, so we'll need to increase our power to reach even 50,000, 70,000 per day, up to 500,000 per week, maybe. That's our challenge, because every time we test ourselves, uh, what we did uh, last uh, Saturday, 35,000. It works then, we've seen it. So in order, in order to be able to reach what we want, our goal, if vaccines are there, if they're delivered, uh, and comply with the deadlines. My biggest fear, it's uh, Daniel Paré's fear also, is that people make appointments based on deliveries. And then we have, then we are forced to call people uh, because deliveries are not coming in. And so that's what we want to avoid. Avoid. Follow-up question. It means we'll have to do vaccinations every year? Answer. I've tried not to answer, but I'll give them the floor. Answer. If we must do it every year, I hope we won't have the consequences we've seen this year. Because we're, we're fatigued. We're tired like everyone else. This coronavirus, will it mutate in a very significant way to such a degree that we'll have to vaccinate the population? There might be an end spectrum about it, but what's going to happen maybe is that we'll reach a certain immunity. Now, 
It's too early to say about this because there might be other types of coronaviruses. Some days I don't want to know. I don't want to ask those questions sometimes because I want to finish this thing. It's important. We need to do the rollout. People need to accept the vaccine as much as possible. We need to conduct our vaccination. We need to mitigate the transmission uh, risks and so on. Question from La Presse Canadienne. Dr. Arruda, you said that Ontario is facing a third wave situation, which is drastic. We see that we've seen different waves, average waves in Quebec for all of the Quebec regions. Are there regions or is there one region which show that there is a third wave? Any signs of a third wave? Answer. We see a lowering level, something like a plateau, the place where we have the greatest um, risk levels. It's the greater Montreal region. That's the greatest risk level uh, because of the variant, because of the density of the population. Question. Mr. Premier, after the COVID, uh, remembers, uh, COVID victim remembrance day. You asked the question, what team could have done better in uh, such a situation? This is far from, from being humble, Mr. Premier. Uh, we don't recognize you. Who wrote that text? Answer. People from the CAC, permanent members of the CAC, I hadn't read that text, uh, I still haven't done it now, but I mean, I know that on a regular basis, uh, militants or, or you know, partisans from the CAC write texts, but uh, it's been a while now that I've, I'm a politician. If you go onto the Liberal Party website or the PQ website or the Quebec Solidaire website, you'll see that you have some supporters texts. You know that supporters, partisans are there to support their party, so they're in favor of their own party, of course. I haven't read the text, but I've been told that this is a text where someone's bragging. I don't believe this is my speaking style, but on the Liberal Party website or the PQ website, I've seen texts which are a bit bombastic, maybe. Partisans, uh, supporters, they, they say that their party is better than other parties and it's a lively way to do politics. We're not different from other political supporters. Some supporters can write texts for other supporters. This is for the CAC supporters, it's not for everyone. Qu uh, follow up, but the, the style that was used was uh, the I style. Answer, this is a literary style. The person who wrote this used the I mode, stating things like I, I. Uh, maybe they should have used a different uh, pronoun. It's just a style. Question. Dr. Arruda, you said that with the variants, there's a likelihood that in a few days there might be a big spread, uh, a big breakout, that numbers might rise quickly. It's been a few days that uh, we've seen the, phase, uh, the end of the spring break. Even though you haven't seen the whole spectrum of the situation, why would you say that it's time now to lower or to ease the guidelines. Answer. A lot of people are saying that we're not easing things, really. I know a lot of people from the Montérégie region, from the uh, Lanoudia, from the Laurent. I mean, they were praying. They were praying in order for their region to turn orange. People were desperate. Some people want us to open up again sports faster, that we open up worship centers faster, and so on. Now, the big announcement today is about the later curfew. Okay, it's nine. We've changed hours, by the way. There's a change, but, you know, visiting people in their home, it's still forbidden. Right? And that's the thing that I'm still concerned about. Dr. Arruda was mentioning this, and I hope that 
bringing the curfew at 9.30 p.m. We hope that we won't see a lot of people thinking that, oh, I can go see my friends now and visit someone in his home until 9 p.m. And so depending if they live far away or not from each other. I hope not. And I'm telling Quebecers, come on, don't do that. We still have a few weeks in front of us. I understand that you want to go for a walk. It's, it's nice outside. It's going to be even nicer in the upcoming weeks. It's clearer outside. But please, please, don't start immediately visiting your friends and gathering with your family. Don't start joining, merging bubbles just for a few hours for uh, nightly gatherings. We have to take into account. Uh, we have to take into account the fatigue due to COVID because people. I mean, remember my faucet analogy in spring? We just open the faucet slightly. We just want a little bit of water. And it's drop by, by drop will increase things. And with vaccination, we'll see a small impact and there, there will be a domino effect on the dynamics. Step by step by step, baby steps, very progressive. That's how we succeed. We are extremely prudent. This is a question for Mr. Dubé. Can you say something about the Jocelyn Ottawa case in Joliet? You've seen maybe that those two nurses that would have uttered those words had undergone a training following the death of uh, Joyce Echaquan. How do you explain that? They had the training in that context. How do you explain what they said? Is there a need to modify the training already? Answer. Well, listen, a culture cannot be changed overnight through just one single training. Unfortunately, this goes way beyond what is being said, what's lived through in a hospital. This is a societal issue given a, the specificities of a given region. I've that at noon when somebody raised the question at the National Assembly. I said that this is totally unacceptable. I had the opportunity to have a, an indirect discussion through my cabinet with a lady that I like a lot. It's Ms. Barbier, the interim CEO. She's met with both nurses this afternoon. They were dismissed. We've acted fast and we'll need more training We'll need trainings and other solutions, more than that, in order to change things. But we'll continue working. I think the message is starting to be understood. We won't let this happen. And I really appreciate the thoroughness of uh, the lady in question, the way she's asked with the dismissals. Question from CBC, Cathy Sonnet. Can you tell me how it will work? Uh, because in yellow zones, uh, gatherings, inside gatherings of two families will, will be able to occur. And also bars will be able to reopen their doors. So do you, what will be the restrictions for bars when they, they'll be able to reopen on March 26th with the curfew not being there anymore? Yes, a uh, good question. We got, we're going to give more precision in the next days around this, but they will not be opening as it was before COVID-19. There's, there's going to be rules like uh, families uh, on the, uh, in the table, no, no singing, no karaoke, there's going to be limits of selling of alcohol, all those measures that can lower the risk, in fact. There's going to be a lowering of the capacity because people will, which would come from not the same family will have to have distanciation. So because of the low circulation over there, I think that's uh, a, a way, uh, something acceptable on the context of the risk of, of the, those situations. But don't think it's going to be the bars that we knew before COVID-19. Okay. Um, I, I was just looking at the number of uh, cases uh, of variants uh, between yesterday and today. They went up by three, uh, 143 to 522. This is like 179 more. And I remember, uh, Premier Legault, when we asked you last year, do you realize at the beginning of the lockdown, do you realize what you're asking Quebecers to do? And going back to those numbers of variants, 
are, are we on a slippery path right now that the number of variants in one day increased by 179 okay. to go back in time and ask Quebecers, we're sorry, but we have to go back to a lockdown as Italy is doing. Okay, first we have to look at the total number of cases, all right? So they are quite stable, that's important. The proportion of uh, cases with the variant will be over 50% next month. So we know that uh, it's already almost planned. Uh, but taking that into consideration, and uh, the uh, people doing the projections, they take that into consideration, we still consider that uh, uh, it's under control. We have to be prudent, but that's why we announce only uh, uh, a few uh, new measures. Uh, so uh, we take that into consideration, but we have to be realistic. By the end of next month, the majority of cases in Quebec will be with the, this variant. Thank you. Oui. I just may add. And what you're talking about is sequencing. It's cases that have been confirmed. They are from weeks from now. It's not just from yesterday. Okay? That's the the part there was there is more 179 new cases that have been sequenced that we already know the ADN structure the, you know so it's not just yesterday it's cases that probably have been sent to the lab 15 uh, three weeks and even once before Christmas to make sure if there were uh, those kinds of new variants. Alors, nous passons maintenant à Philippe Autier de De Gazette. Uh, question from okay, Philippe Autier de Gazette. Uh, a quick question for you, Dr. Arruda. Uh, are all the positive cases that we are getting now being screened for variants? They have been in screened for variants. All of them? Yeah, I would say they are being screened for variants. They are not all sequenced. The, the ones which are sequenced, it's a poor proportion, around 10 to 15 percent, because we don't need to sequence all that. But all cases are going through a process of detection. We call it criblage, the first step to see if there are variants or not. And, and what, are the, what is the percentage of cases across Quebec now that are suspected variants? I would across say the province? It, it depends from the region. It, it's around Montreal. Around Montreal, it's around 20 percent. In the Capitale Nationale, actually, but it's the, when there is less cases, the numbers are less stable. It's around 33 percent. And uh, so it depends. Uh, it's not meaning that there is, there is a higher risk in Quebec comparing to to, to Montreal, because the, the, when you go in lower cases, it's normal to have a, a, a overestimation. So, but I would say it's probably around around Quebec. I would say on between 15 and 20, 20, 21, more around in the Montreal region. And Mr. Legault, you were. It, it was interesting today. Madame Anglade was saying uh, gave some of the names of the MNAs in our caucus who have been vaccinated, Mr. Barret, uh, uh, Madame David. Um, and you said in French that you're a bit torn about wanting to show the example of getting the vaccine and not going ahead of the queue because you're 63. Uh, is this, is this a, a, difficult, a difficult position for you to be in? I'm happy. Uh, to see that uh, Christian uh, is born uh, uh, before me, so uh, he will be able to show the example. Uh, but you're, you're not able to show the example yourself because... Yeah, but, but since the beginning, eh, uh, we ask ourselves, uh, should we be vaccinated in order to be a model and... Uh, convince uh, more Quebecers to be vaccinated. Uh, it's a good argument. It's a positive argument. But in Quebec, you know, uh, people, they don't like that uh, we use uh, some power or the, 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 the position we have to, to uh, get something before the other ones. Uh, I was hearing uh, one of uh, the journalists, Charles Le Cavalier, yesterday he said, uh, if anybody, if, if, if nobody wants the AstraZeneca, I'll go. Uh, so, uh, so I don't want to be before Charles Le Cavalier. 
He's not as old as we are. How so? Alors, allons terminer pour les questions de la salle we'll avec end Fletcher, with Rachel Fletcher. Um, with this goal of having every Quebecer who wants to be vaccinated by June 24th, what will that mean for the summer in Quebec? <laughs> it's a good it news, but we don't know how good. Uh, I think uh, there is a better uh, uh, situation probably comparing to last summer, but even I don't know how is, is the virus to react. Will it go down in May, June as it was going down in the other, in the other perspective? What, but, uh, what will be uh, something change will be the fact that more people are going to be protected against the disease. If they get, they are protected, they probably will not go, have to go to the hospital or die if they uh, uh, catch the disease. That's the issue. But I cannot actually project it and say festivals are going to be open like before. You know, I think it's too soon. And don't forget that we, if we want to maintain a long term, uh, a long-term immunity, there's going to be a need for a second dose. So that's another issue to take into consideration. But it will depend on the epidemiology. You know, uh, we were not aware of having variants th this spring as we are have, having right now, weeks uh, ago or before Christmas. But that's that's the, the the thing. I would like to give you the answer. I'm dreaming. Of the well, answer. It, it's better June 24 than September 30, all right, for the summer. Yeah, yeah. but that leads into my next question because uh, Mr. Zube said that some people who have already gotten the vaccine, they're a little bit too joyful about getting it. Um, so there's already that aspect, and, and we see that. We've been interviewing people who've gotten their vaccine, and they're all smiling. You can see them smiling even underneath their mask. They're so happy to get this vaccine. And then today you announced that <clears throat> by by you know, the Saint Jean Baptiste Day, the day that is we celebrate in Quebec, everyone who wants to is going to be vaccinated. So don't you anticipate that people are going to be jumping off the walls by then, right? They're gonna be really excited for summer in, in Quebec. How are you gonna well, have the right them? to be happy. We just everybody wants to to enjoy what we've been suffering for for the last year. I'm just saying that when we get vaccinated we just need to be prudent for the following weeks because that that would be terrible and we've seen that in a couple of uh, long-term house uh, the disability center or rpa that people were so happy that they forgot to to follow the rules for a few weeks and then suddenly they we catch the virus so i'm just saying that let's be happy that everybody will be uh, vaccinated by the end of june but at the same time, when you get vaccinated, continue to be prudent for the few weeks after. That, that's, that's my point. It's so important to repeat that. The next few weeks are critical. If we want to have a better summer, we have to be careful in the next few weeks. And there is hope. Uh, oui, deux questions transmises par oh. uh, courriel. Two questions by email, the one from François Moudjan, the media team. Dr. Arruda, in a press conference at the beginning of March, you said that uh, the outbreaks regarding the South African variant in the ABTB, Timiskaming region, are under control. The region now has 25 active cases. What will be needed for the region to become yellow? How can you... Uh, how can you justify the fact that there have been no modifications in the region? Answer. We've discussed this with the public authorities, public health authorities. There is a variant that's more transmissible in a significant way from South Africa. And with some interventions, which were quite serious, they were able to control it. And the very region, considering that, and they want to avoid exporting, shall I say, this uh, very uh, South African variant to other regions. Quebec. Anyway, we are analyzing this and we're looking at the Ottawa region near Ottawa. There's a lot of circulation in that region and so on. So I've said this already. Do not look only at the numbers of the day. You have to look at the trend or trends before changing 
colors, uh, you need to get uh, a certain stability for quite some time. Question for the Premier. François Kerepi, Radio X, I read the question. Impossible to ignore Ms. Geneviève Guilbeault's uh, appearance uh, on Marie-Ève Lortie's show last week. She seemed to say that some elderly people, her great parents, really helped us a lot for the work and home uh, balance. There's a, an issue regarding children that are uh, the receive uh, that are guarded by, by the family. Uh, do you have any information about the sanitary considerations regarding this when a situation like that occurs? I, answer, I'm not aware of this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.